Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me in Mesa, Arizona. That is my Tesla Model S and we are at Atlas because I love charging cars. You guys know that. I've charged with you the Hummer EV faster than any other vehicle I have up to this point. Almost 360 kilowatts. Sounds like a ton. Remember how excited we were when we charged Lucid Air at 351 kilowatts? It was just insane. We made a whole video about it. But today we're going double and more than double. I think for the first time ever on camera on YouTube, we are going to be talking about one megawatt charging and even slightly above. Uh, Atlas has kindly invited us here to their headquarters in Mesa, Arizona, and we are going to be demonstrating in this video the fastest charging I've ever seen. It's going to be crazy. I'm going to walk you through all of the different connector styles that are going to be used for this, their own proprietary charging standard, which we're calling Atlas Advanced Charging. Super sick. And of course, we'll plug in the Model S and max that out as well, but that's just child's play for what's going on behind me. So let's get into the Atlas Advanced Charger, a full tour. I can't wait to show you guys this. All right, guys, so before we actually go and do this crazy high power charging, I kind of want to show you the experiment we've lined up and also all the cool stuff we've brought and they've brought to show us. It's, I mean, to be totally honest, this is one of the coolest days at work ever. I can't thank you all enough for watching our videos to allow us to do cool stuff like this. It's freaking awesome. So we brought down, again, the Model S Plaid from Colorado. And what we're gonna do is, is obviously max this car out. It should do about 250, 260 kilowatts on the CCS connector. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Let me show you actually what they've got back here. This shipping container is really the Atlas high power charger, if you will. They call it the Atlas Advanced Charger. And, um, you know, up to this point, 350, 360 kilowatts, that's really, you know, the ballpark we've been playing in. That's pushing the technology. This can do way more. So on the left side here, there's just a typical CCS connection here, Amphenol cable, we're all familiar with this. This one's a 350 amp version. We're gonna overdrive it just for a short period of time with temperature monitoring. So that should be pretty fun to play around with. But we see these out in the public. We know this stuff, all good um, and pretty standard. There's another charging standard for high power charging, which we've been talking about a lot called MCS, Megawatt Charging Set, Standard Megawatt Charging System. And that is good. I think the spec will go up to about three megawatts, gonna be freaking awesome, but it's still some time away. There's no AC component as well. So if you need to use AC with Megawatt Charging Standard, you actually need a separate port on there. Um, Atlas decided to, to actually create their own charging handle. Now, the one thing I just want to be totally transparent and explain this to you guys a little bit is Atlas will be owning and operating their own high power, crazy fast charging infrastructure out in the wild. They're going to be supporting MCS, CCS, and this, the Atlas Advanced Charger. So it's uh, really going to be open to all. This is what we're going to be pumping a lot of juice through today. You can see four high power pins. Victor, my friend, will walk you through exactly how this is all done. They have a water cooled cable here, uh, which is all pretty freaking awesome. And this Atlas advanced charger, uh, we're going to pump, I think, 1.1, 1.15 megawatts through it. I don't know. Going to be crazy. I think truly the first actual demonstration, not a simulation of high power charging ever to be filmed on YouTube should be really cool. I, I'm so excited that we're able to charge faster than anyone before. The only problem is when we want to max this out, there's really no vehicle that we can find to accept that much power. Again, the highest production vehicle would be Hummer EV. Some of the semi trucks are four or 500 kilowatts, something like that. Um, yeah, so we have to dump the power somewhere. Again, this is all future technology that's going to be coming out. So let me show you this freaking cool thing. This is basically a charger, you know, basically pretend this is the vehicle inlet side, which it basically is. So you have the, the charger outlet to an inlet and the inlet is connected to a load bank, not just any battery simulator load bank. It's actually connected to a bunch of water. <laughs> and what we're going to be doing is basically jamming high voltage, high current into this. And we're going to be boiling, I, hundreds of gallons of water. I don't know exactly how much Victor can tell us. And so there's basically load banks here and we're going to be juicing this, steaming it up, boiling it up. It's going to be just insane. So we're talking such high power charging that there's really not many available vehicles on the road that we can again 
dump power into, not one that I'm aware of personally. Uh, if you guys know, let us know so Atlas can buy them. Some of the charging team behind me, these guys are awesome. And uh, <laughs> all of their hard work we're showcasing today, it's super freaking cool. Take a look inside the actual container that the charger is, just peek your head in here. Victor will walk us through, but you can see um, actually a pretty normal charger set up. These are 30 kilowatt bricks. This is like what you'll find inside of a, uh, you know, regular uh, DC charger that we use out in the public, but just a bunch more. So we're talking super high power. And then the really funny part is, even here at Atlas's headquarters, they couldn't get the grid connection to really pump that much juice through. So this entire building doesn't even have enough power to put through. So just for the demonstration today, they've brought in some extra power. And, and I think it's so cool that their megawatt charger right here, this Atlas Advanced Charger, can really accept power from a grid connection, solar, wind, or of course, if you need it, a generator. And so that's what we have out here. They've brought in three <laughs> high power generators. These things freaking rip. Right now they're just idling, getting warmed up, ready to pump the juice. Uh, but we should hear the turbos spool up on them when they go under full load. So we have a 500 kilowatt, a 350 kilowatt, and a 250 kilowatt charger, all feeding in to this right here. So part of it is being able to obviously push the juice through the cable, but of course, you need to make sure you have a grid connection that can handle it, whether it's stationary battery storage, which they're talking about and working on, whether it's, of course, if you have a pop-up event and need to charge a bunch of cars, you're at a you know big concert, cars are there, you can obviously hook it up to uh, diesel generators, whatever you need. So that is gonna be the part of the conversation with Victor as well that we're gonna explore. But for now, what do you say we go on a full tour of this thing and for the first time on video, on YouTube, show a megawatt charge guys this is my friend victor thanks for having me here <laughs> love, love to have you here i just want to say if you don't know him you should because you guys have an awesome youtube channel yep and what is the name of the youtube atlas motor vehicles? atlas motor vehicles on youtube so, instagram linkedin the reason i'm so excited about this and i've seen some of your videos is you guys are super open about everything you're doing about the progress yeah, I saw you charging your e-tron, for example, on this. My wife's e-tron. Your wife's e-tron, yeah. I mean, it's just a, a great YouTube channel. So if you don't follow Atlas Motor Vehicles, highly recommend. But tell us what we're doing today. Can you take us on a full tour of the equipment? And I think our audience is really interested in the megawatt stuff, as am I. And you had to develop your own connector, your sure. own design. So what are we working with today? So for those of you that uh, have seen the videos, uh, I myself, Victor, I'm the director and lead engineer of charging ecosystems and energy storage here. And so what that means is I put in my, my, uh, my love for charging infrastructure into the products that we have here. And so this is literally the first of its kind because I haven't seen anybody demonstrate megawatt charging. No one, I've, no I've one. looked all over the internet, can't find any clips. If you find some comment, but Hello. I mean, this thing, we're doing legit today, one megawatt output. Yes. And so for Atlas, what we do here is we take the crawl, walk, run approach. And so okay. what you're seeing today is the crawl, the end of the crawl portion where we start walking. Uh, and what that means is that we are demonstrating our own in-house design cable and handle, as well as our software that's controlling the power electronics equipment that's inside this container over here. And we'll talk a little bit about the source power as well as the load power and how we go from the walking to the running phase later on. Yeah, so well, go, yeah. I'm excited to see it. Check so it out. Obviously, everything's inside of this container here. Is there a reason you chose a container or what was so, the idea? Uh, in terms of prototyping, the container is the easiest portion uh, to perform like testing and whatnot. I mean, the phrase I usually say is if anything goes wrong, it's contained in the container. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, the outside of it shouldn't really matter. It's the insides that we're focusing on. It's the power electronics, the control systems and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and later on, we'll take you inside. It'll be the first time that the public gets to see the inside of the container. Oh. You're going to see you don't need a container to fill up a megawatt of power sure it literally we take almost a quarter of the container uh and we can push all that energy uh through. That's so cool so cool and of course our audience saw just how much power we had to bring in to run this thing yes it's juicy pretty exciting yes and this looks freaking awesome so we went through a couple of iterations of the charge handle it started off with this big behemoth of uh, of the charge handle uh and so we listen to the audience we listen to everybody that's uh tells us their thoughts on what the handle looks like some say it's a uh, ginormous or, or huge and then we went through different iterations of the charge handle so what we do is we do a lot of rapid prototyping here at atlas to understand form fit and function how do people hold it do they hold it like this or do they hold it like that and then through all the iterations 
uh, we've gone through, this was one of our final designs. And so you can see it's very similar to the design we have today. Uh, and when we compared it to MCS, a lot of people were like, yo, that thing is huge. And we're like, okay, fine. Let's go back to the drawing board. Let's revisit it. And then we ended up creating two versions. We created this one uh, and this one here. And you can notice it is a fraction of the size compared to the one you saw before. Uh, and the argument that we're having internally right now is, do we have it handleless or do we have a handle on it? Uh, and I'm curious what your thoughts are. Put them in the comments. Yeah, I mean, personally, yeah, definitely you guys let us know. For me, I'm a handle guy. I think this is pretty cool. I think, honestly, it's probably a bit too long, in my opinion, for the handle. Maybe if you can shorten it at if all. we will. Oh, yeah, so that's possible yep, then. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. But I guess before we even continue, Victor, why do you need to go with your own connector when MCS is already in conversation, in progress, and happening? So the big issue with MCS today is that MCS is focused on uh, DC charging only. So the vehicles that do come out with uh, the MCS port will require a secondary port for AC power. Okay. And the issue that is if we do have a secondary like CCS port or whatever AC port, mm -hmm. the standards today for J1772 cap at 240 volts. And in the US, type one is only single phase, split phase charging. Sure, so 80 amps, you're at 19 kilowatt max. max. Yeah. Yeah. And if you were to go type two, you could do 22 kilowatt yes. three phase, but then our power grid isn't fully set up for that. Or what, what so is your right. thoughts on that? Uh, so when you're talking about an industrial building like this, you're getting 208 volts uh, AC on the step down for the 110. So yes. single phase uh, is uh, the 110 with the three phase being 208 power. Yep. So you're actually stepping down the power. Uh, if you don't want to step down the power and you use the 480 power, the single phase version of that is 277 volts, yes. which is out of spec when right. it comes to the standard. Uh, and so Atlas took approach where, okay, how do we solve the problem of both AC and DC, also providing AC uh, high power charger? So right. we don't cap ourselves at the J1772 standard, so we were kind of forced to go into our own standard. Very similar to how other automakers were like, uh, we have to create our own standard because it's going to take years for the standard to come out. Right. I mean, we saw this. I hope I don't mind saying it. Tesla did this before J1772 yes. was a thing. So you guys basically found holes in the standard for the application of medium heavy duty stuff where you're like, hey, we need to charge AC, maybe 50 kilowatts, whatever it might be. And there's no solution today to do this. And yep. so you set out to make this all in one connector that could do maybe, I don't know, what's the limit on AC? What do you think you could push that thing uh, to? We're pushing 200 amps, uh, 50 kilowatts okay. through the AC side. Through AC, and then of course, over a megawatt DC. Oh, beyond a megawatt. Using the same pins. So what right. pins in here are AC, what are DC, or and are so you sharing them? Is it's my it's understanding. still in the works, the standard, as we work out some of the kinks, we still have some internal testing. You still yep. have all the, the safety protections and interlocks that go with this. But for prototyping, this meets the needs in order to demonstrate the megawatt charging that we do. And so very similar to how other companies do it today is you can share the pins uh, for different applications depending on what you're doing for AC or DC. So for three-phase charging, you can have your three phases and you can have your neutral or potential earth. Uh, and for DC charging, you will have uh, two positive pins and two negative pins to distribute the load uh, accordingly. And communication, I'm not seeing any small pins or anything yes. in here. So interestingly, there, there's kind of the internal struggle right now that's happening within the, uh, the new standard uh, community that's coming out. And is yep. it going to be differential PLC uh, or is it going to be uh, CAN communication? Is it going to be, uh, uh, what do you call it, Ethernet? Right. So these are all like the charring conversations for MCS that are happening. Amongst many conversations. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, and so Atlas sits on, on both charring and SEJ3271. That's the yep. megawatt charging standard here. And so our approach is to do wireless communication oh. uh, because you can actually communicate wirelessly quicker than you can through whether it be CAN or differential PLC hmm. or any of these other standards. And so it's like, let's explore it, let's go after it. Because what we do here at Atlas is uh, not reinventing the wheel because the wheel doesn't exist. So uh, Atlas is about the whole ecosystem. It's not just the charger, it's the power electronics, uh, including the onboard charger, developing 50 kilowatts uh, with an onboard charger bi-directional support for ISO 15118. That could be exciting, That's, yeah. That could be very exciting, yeah. as well as uh, energy storage solutions. Um, and some of our other power electronics include like active balancing, HVAC systems. Uh, yeah, the active rooms. balancing, we were talking to some yes. of those guys over there. It's just so cool. Rather than bleeding off an imbalance as heat, you're actually sending the power to That's another right. cell. Yep. It's pretty freaking sweet. Yep. It increases your efficiency beyond any like passive BMS that exists on the market. Yeah. So this is the handle that we're demonstrating here in the video today. And you can see that uh, we've pushed uh, beyond the thousand amps. We had a press release recently announcing that we've pushed uh, 1200 amps through this. Mm -hmm. And then this is a CCS cable that's over here that's limited to 350 amps. Right. So you talk about 
1200 amps, 350 amps. The way we like to call it, uh, by the way, we no longer rate cables on kilowatts. We're now, this is, this current cable is designed for 1.5 megawatts, and this cable is designed for 0.375 megawatts. <laughs> I love it. It's, we've just, just blown past kilowatt yes. ratings. And now everything is just a fraction of a megawatt. And so uh, I'm glad to give you the opportunity to uh, plug this in right now and demonstrate our capabilities. First time ever on camera. That's right. Charging at, how fast are we going to go on this thing? Let's, let's find I'm out. Gonna, I'm going to push the biggest number you let me push on the screen. Let me drop this over here. I'm going to take your, what are you call this? The Atlas Advanced Charging Standard. Yes. Right? And um, I guess just one last point before we plug this in. I just wanted to make the distinction. The chargers that people will find out in the wild that you guys will have, which will be this technology, you'll support CCS, MCS, that's, and this here as well. That's correct. So you're not just saying we're against MCS. You're just saying we need a better solution for your products, your chassis, but you're still in full support of the standards for your chargers. Yeah. Uh, most open standards that exist that allow us to communicate with it, we will be, as you mentioned, we will be CCS compatible, yeah. uh, MCS compatible, as well as our own standard. And you're going to have multi ports within the stations themselves. That's the way it should be. It should be awesome so basically what i'm going to do is plug in your your dc output connector into an inlet which i showed our audiences fed into the water over there so let's, do let's see how hard it is to plug in okay that's really easy <laughs> we're gonna make it easier <laughs> oh, that's amazing yeah. i mean for something that has that much power is just truly incredible yeah, um, absolutely. i mean and of course the wireless communication means there's just less i would say issue you know you're less pins that could get damaged yep. seems pretty cool uh, what are we looking at on this screen here? What do, okay. what do we see? So this is the diagnostics data that outputs out of the charger. Now the chargers themselves, the Atlas chargers, are not going to have screens uh, because they're kind of irrelevant. Everybody has a digital screen in their pocket. And yep. so what we're showing here is kind of a, a mock-up or a test picture to demonstrate what the vehicle inlet would look like. So this is connected to a load. And on the screen over here, you can see the pre-charge voltage before you uh, introduce that voltage into a battery pack yep. to prevent in-rush current. And then once you trigger the, the charger, and we're going to go through that process, you're going to see the output voltage uh, as well as the current that's passing through the cable and then the system power that's pushing itself. And then over here, you get to see the temperature of the inlet, not, not the cooled cable side, right. the inlet, which is on the vehicle side. Um, and you can watch that barely break through. And that's the most impressive degrees. part because the inlet's not water cooled. That's right. I mean, you're water cooling all the way to the pins on this thing here. You got a big pump, which we'll show everyone inside after we do the charging test. But um, I guess the one last question I have is since we're charging water, if you will, it's really no different than charging a car. We actually Hello. just have to set the voltage, yes. right? Because it's not typically the car sets the voltage as the battery pack we're gonna just say, hey, go 400 volts, 800 volts, 1000 volts, That's whatever right. it is. Yeah, so the resistive load that we have over there, kind of, we control what the vehicle would be in the instance. So we tell it what voltage and what current to output. Yeah. Where uh, in, in the vehicle over here, in your example, the vehicle then tells the charger, I need this voltage and current. And so the biggest issue right now is when it comes to external manufacturers uh, and their communications between the vehicle and the charger. Sometimes chargers will act up when a vehicle comes in and it's like, hey, I speak a different language. Sure. I don't know what to do. And then a charger only spits out 50 kilowatts. We see this far too often when there's yeah. not enough I testing going on exactly so let's grab the tablet let's do it and uh i think i don't know i i think it'd be kind of cool let's start 400 volts everyone's pretty familiar with that and maybe 500 amps is that an okay starting let's point let's do it so it's that that should be 200 kilowatts and uh i feel like that's pretty fast that's like mercedes eqs maxed out that's close to what the model s will do using ccs um yeah, so yeah, right. there you go, 500, Oops, go ahead. zero, zero. So can I show our audience this yes, really quick? Yes, go for it. So what we've done is we've, we're using the AMV dashboard. This is just all engineering stuff. But what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're gonna charge that device ID. We're gonna send a start charging request, 400 volts, 500 amps. Now, before we actually start charging, can we look at the water temperature? Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so that way we can see, okay, all that current's going. The diesel generators are idling out there. Thermal camera? All right, thermal Let's canvas coming. And um, this is basically what we're going to dump the load into. And, and 200 kilowatts is, is child's play, really, for this thing. Don't do this at home. <laughs> right. So here's the, here's the thermal camera. Thank you. Let's so take if you a take look a look here. right now, so the water is at about 20 to about 20, a little bit above 20 Celsius. Yep room temperature. Cool. So we got our baseline temperature there roughly. Let's run back over to the charger and uh, 
<laughs> this is freaking awesome. There you go. So we're gonna basically set the pre-charge. I don't know, should I just hit start? Hit start. Okay, 400 volts, 500 amps, send command, boom. So it takes about, oh, it takes about yep. five seconds for the screen to refresh. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna engage the contactor. Okay. And you're gonna see it then. Contactor, so I can hear the load on the generators. <laughs> Those things are spooling. And here we go, roughly 500 amps coming, 194 kilowatts. And that's, again, all- Child's play. Yeah, really child's I, I'm play. I'm sorry, that's uh, uh, 0.194 megawatts. <laughs> that's right. And what you actually, what's going on is that is all literally running through this cable right down here. So we are essentially charging a car, but it, the car's water. Let's, let's, uh, let's ramp it up, 1,000 volts. Okay. Keep it at 600 amps, let's see what happens. Well, yeah, so 1,000 volts, 500 amps, should I go up to 600? 600 amps. So 1,000 volts, 600. Let's see if we- Send it. Sending. So when we change the voltage, it restarts. So that's why it drops to zero. Okay, and then, then reloads everything up. back up. And Pretty now sick. what I want you to do is I just want you to keep increasing the current by 200 amps. Okay, so we're at 600 amps right now. That's 700. Eight, eight. Is 800, 200? yep. 800 amps, send, send command. So we can see on our graph here, we're going up in power. Good Big 800. spikes here, 800 amps, over 500 kilowatts at the moment. Thousand amps, why not? Thousand amps, holy smokes. This is freaking crazy. <laughs> so thousand amps, thousand volts, one megawatt. Send command. So you're gonna see 800 because of the resistive load. So you're gonna see yep. uh, 800 volts, thousand amps. And now <laughs> I want, why not? 1200 amps. 1200 amps. Why not? The diesel generators the are ripping right now. I just can't believe we're sending that much power through this. Yeah. Send command, 1200 amps. Oh, turbo's Yo, full you send. Hear it? Yes. Uh, let's watch. Look oh, at that. 1.18 megawatts. <laughs> Things are ripping. Look at the graph. We've gone up to almost 1.2 megawatts right here. I'm looking at this. This is the temperature of the inlet. Yeah. Interesting. You can see a tiny creep, but it's not even at 25C, not even close. Amazing. And we're just ripping this thing. Yeah. And uh, cool to the touch. <laughs> Touching the cable. Why not? That's... This got hot and we were only pushing 300 kilowatts. Oh my gosh. This is one point, I think almost 1.2 megawatts. The fastest charger that is user accessible out in public right now is 750 kilowatts roughly. Wait, what vehicle? Semi. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. In the semi world. Yep. So that's the, that, you know, of course you can have like ferries that have like adapters, but this is a connector that I just plugged in. Yes. Doing 1.18 continuous. The generators are absolutely ripping right now. So let me ask you a question. If we pushed 1.2 megawatts into your vehicle, how long would it take to charge from uh, start to finish? I really want to find out how long it would take for yeah. this to if catch on fire. <laughs> yeah. If it could take it, <laughs> it cannot. what do you think? Uh, so it's a 100 kilowatt hour pack, so it'd be just under 10 minutes. Under 10 minutes. I mean, that's to full. assuming there's no charging taper. I mean, yes. if the car could do that. Yeah, and so that's kind of what we're doing here at Atlas. And as I mentioned, the crawl, walk, run. Uh, and for us, it's to demonstrate that we can deliver that amount of power. No one on the market makes a cable like this, nor a handle like this. I mean, it's crazy. We're just sitting flat. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see how long we can do this for. <laughs> can we go check on the let's water? Go let's see what's happening. <laughs> you have the FLIR camera still or, or no. the thermal? Hey, energy? Danny. Let's grab that. Uh, I think he's looking at the load okay. right now. Yeah, he's checking yeah, the water he's got right the... now. What's the temp at? 60. 60. Oh, it's already at 60. <laughs> so we're just juicing up. How many gallons of water is this? 30. Uh, so each large tank is what? 400 gallons? 700. Seven, each one is 700. Wow. 1,400 gallons. Could you bring it over here? Could we check this one port? And look, we're still sitting again, you know, 1.18 oh, yeah. megawatts. Yeah, here, we can, let's switch it over. So it's really, yeah, look at all those connections getting nice and hot. So you can see it here. Oh, yeah. Let me make it full. Anna, time. come take a look at this over here. So this is the same thing that's on the screen there, sitting at 1.18, just flat, consistent, full send mode. Um, can we actually look inside the, the, uh, Let's container? See. It's going to be a little loud. The fans have got to be ripping in that oh, thing. Oh, they're ripping. <laughs> this is insane. I've never charged anything this, I mean, we can't, there's nothing that can even charge this fast. Let's check it out. <laughs> Unless it's a ferry, of course. Oh yeah. Fans are ripping in here. <laughs> 
it's get, getting warmer and warmer as you walk in. Yeah, oh my so gosh. We need an order to do 1.2 megawatts. Oh, Actually, we wow. believe we can push it more. We capped it at 1,200 amps because when we originally designed it, we designed it for 1,000 amps. Yeah. The fuses that we installed were at 1,200 amps. And so we don't want to burn out the fuse so we can continue testing. Although with the cable remaining cool, we believe that we can push way beyond 1.5 megawatts. And we're going to strive for that. We're going to go for that. That's you amazing. Can hear me, it's yeah. loud in here. Well, we'll go through this when we stop we're charging back. when yes. it's less loud. But it really is heating up quick in here yes. because and all of these things are just maxing out. Holy smokes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's just peek out here at the generators. <laughs> these these suckers are ripping. So I'm hoping you can hear me. I'm going to talk close to the yeah, mic. Yeah. So uh, the reason for the generators is because the building supply that we can get uh, within our particular office suite can only handle about 600 kVA of energy. And so what we're doing right now, before we demonstrate our battery pack hooked up as a battery energy storage system uh, and doing DC charging, we're first going to demonstrate we could do AC source charging. Okay. So we rented these generators to show the delivery of the current, the power, through the cable itself. That's freaking awesome. These things are just pegged. <laughs> so also, part of the solution for uh, Atlas is to be able to drop the solution anywhere in the world. And so right now, the benefit of having this container is it's got, if you take a look at behind over here, you have all the disconnect switches with the cam locks on it. And cam locks is a universal connection that you can hook up to any generator or most generators that are on the market. So therefore, you can deploy this, let's say, in the areas where you have the Super Bowl or the, the Phoenix Open or something like that. The Wasteland right. Open. I mean, ideally, you're not going to be powering it from generators. Ideally. But if you need to, you can. It's available. So it's a drop-in solution. And it uses whatever sustainable sources of energy. It doesn't have to be generator. It doesn't have to be utility. Uh, once we hook up the battery pack, and there is a small battery pack in there where we have demonstrated off-grid charging and DC charging. Yeah. Uh, and we're ramping that up as we continue production on the battery cells. And then you could do solar charging, wind power, and whatnot. Um, cool. Drop-in solution. Dude, this is so sick. <laughs> Holy smokes. So it's been how long? Uh, we usually keep a, a clock. I don't know. It's been minutes, uh, you would think. Yeah, so how many times over do you think you've charged your car? I mean, at this point, the car is getting close to full, I would think. Probably even... Oh, I'm on this thing dead to full, we're probably getting close to full. You think you might have charged your car three times over at this point? I don't think we did 300 kilowatt hours. What do you think? No, no, I'm talking about three times. Like if you went empty to full, you could have charged your car three oh, times. Yeah. And it's one continuous duty cycle. And this cable, cool to the touch. Is it really? Yeah, it's getting warmer. You're starting to feel it, but it's still pretty cool. No, that's, that's almost just slightly above ambient. Yep. I mean, I would walk up to that charger publicly and not think it's hot at all. I mean, it's really not that different. Yeah. I'm still just maxed out, you know, 1.2 thousand amps. <laughs> Let's check the water and then I feel like we're going to start smoking this thing back here. Are we getting toasty back here? Yes, yeah. It's starting to steam. You're starting to steam. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. We're at about 54C right now. 54C, 1400 gallons of water. It's you can literally see it steaming up over here. That's pretty sick. So, what do you think? Should we stop it? Or Hell no. Let's really? keep going. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome. So cool. So, what vehicle is out there that you could plug into? to met, Like, what's the most power you could pull out of this right now? That's a good question. So, uh, a lot of the vehicles that we're attempting to charge right now can't... We're producing so much energy that the vehicles can't handle it. So, we're restricted by the vehicles that are on the market. Right. That's why, like, we're... We're like we love to show the the charging of your uh, Tesla that you got over here. Yeah. Um, but that's just, child's play that's, for it. That's it. I mean, it's it's no limit for us. So that's why there's no tag underneath the handle that says 300 amps on it. Um, it's whatever vehicle shows up, and we try to future proof ourselves to ensure. I mean, think like I'm just thinking like even six seven years ago yes. when you know, 120 kilowatt charging was the standard. Yep. And then remember when Tesla with their version two chargers up to 150, I remember going there, I was like, oh my God, 150 kilowatts, this is crazy. I was like, this, you don't need to go any faster than this. Then we got 250 kilowatt, 350 kilowatts. And then it's just like, oh, 1.2 megawatts. Yeah, just jump. <laughs> and, and you know, of course, going even higher than that. So. Wow, we're literally smoking this place right here. So we give it a couple more minutes and you're gonna see a rolling boil on this. Oh, really? So we're talking about breaking some world records, like maybe, uh, what, what were we talking about? The most crawfish? 
Bowl of ramen? Largest yeah. bowl of ramen? We, like, <laughs> hey, if Guinness is watching this, we'd totally love to set that world record. That's pretty amazing. Um, I don't think anybody's boiled water as quickly as we have. No, I, uh, I've never actually seen anything like this, personally. I don't think our audience really has, either. Let's run back over to the yeah, charger. Okay. I want to tuck on the, uh, the connector over here. And for the publicly installed charger, is it going to look like this no, cabinet absolutely here? Not. Okay, so this is just for demo. And so we spent the last few months trying to figure out what the charging station is going to look like. And I'm very curious what your thoughts are. What do you think the future of like the charging infrastructure looks we like? We should talk is about Is it going that. to be like a gas pump? Or do you think is it going to be a box? Hmm. Um, or is it going to be like a light post and you just plug in? Like, yeah, it's I mean, open right now. Right now it's open. Yeah, however you want to do it. But I think we haven't seen the future, that's for sure. Yeah. We're looking at a lot of bad designs out in the public. And pull through charging, especially for big power stuff, has yeah. to happen. Yeah, so that's still open, what it's going to look like. But I keep one thing, there's going to be no screens. We're probably going to have LEDs to kind of say when it's done and what the capacity is of the vehicle. Yeah. You might have a kiosk that demonstrates uh, uh, what the charge station is currently pushing. Maybe yeah. a display board that shows all the vehicles that are charging. Yeah. Like, who's, like a scoreboard says who's the fastest vehicle yeah, I'm, that's on there. I take credit for that <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. If that happens, I'm, yeah. I'm taking um, credit. And so, like, some of the standards that are coming out with, like, federally mandated uh, installations, deployments of charging stations. Right. Uh, like the uh, EV infrastructure bill that's out. Yep. Uh, requires, like, payment uh, consoles and whatnot to be universal. Yep. There's going to be no apps that are required to use it. Right. Um, although you get the best experiences when you do have the app because then you can visually Monitor see everything from your the phone. whole condition. If you were, let's just say, Atlas, of course, we know is, is putting their cells into chassis. We've seen you demonstrate some rolling chassis even, even before maybe your own vehicles come out you're going to be selling some of these chassis yep. ideally will those be like plug and charge integrated all of that stuff yeah so we're always looking to the future you're going to have obviously the v2g iso 15118 yeah uh, and they will be backwards compatible so all the products that we're creating will be uh, capable of charging via ccs or whatever standard the customer wants oh, that's great that's up. awesome so it doesn't necessarily have to be this connector but it's always an option. But the benefit of being in an ecosystem, you get the best benefits of being part of the ecosystem, where the systems between the BMS and the battery pack and the HVAC system and the charging system all communicates to each other. Right. Because if you have a, let's say, a uh, CCS charger hooked up to an Atlas battery, you're only gonna get two to three C rate, where our Atlas batteries are capable of five to six C rate. And then today, today, I mean, we're talking to partners, maybe, you know, they can catch up, uh, but today the Atlas charger is the only one that can demonstrate megawatt charging. Right, I mean, that's the coolest thing for me. I was like, you know, I wanted to take our audience on a journey to find the highest power, coolest charging stations in the world. That's why we're here, because you're the only ones who offered us nope. to say, yeah, we'll show you how to charge sure. fast. And I like that you let us, you know, sort of unveil this with you as well, which yeah. is really, really cool. First. Let's check on the connector. I mean, this thing's not glowing red yet. It's actually barely raised in temperature. So how much, what's the flow rate? What's in this thing? How are you cooling uh, it? That's proprietary. Really? That's secret sauce right yeah. there. Yeah, okay. What's, what's going on there though? And so it's immersion cooling uh, technology within the cable itself. Uh, it's in direct contact with the conductor. Okay. The particular type of dielectric that's used with the conductor determines how quickly you can pull away heat. Okay. Uh, and so depending on the size, let's say, like we theoretically could make this cable smaller, but it requires a higher pressure within the cable and more yeah. flow. Yeah. Uh, and then when, like, for example, you can use things, uh, uh, coolants like uh, water glycol, for example, yep. um, or you could use uh, different types of oils uh, within it, uh, yep. you know, silicon oils. But you're going right up to the pins, basically. Exactly. Yeah, which is really sweet. And it so needs to be. because of the conductor on the pin side, on the end of it, and you, you pointed out that it was a pretty large size. Yeah. Um, and the coolant runs very close to the end of the tip. Because of the large conductor end and the, the mass of the copper that's in there, yeah. you're able to wick away heat really quickly, which is why the inlet stays cool. Right, so we, you can see just it's starting to rise. Trend. We're, we're, I mean, maybe gained what three degrees C since yes. we started, maybe four, yep. or maybe not even. And again, monitoring the inlet, the back end portion of this. It's just so amazing that we're just maxing this thing out straight through. The water's got to be really steaming at this yeah, point. What in do you a think? few more minutes, the whole place is going to steam up. <laughs> That's so cool. I guess so. We, again, I think the idea, my suggestion, I don't know if it matters really, is when you put this out in the public, I think it'd be great to have all of your connectors, however you do it, design the site. And then when you plug in the vehicle, start at a low power charging state, like that station I demonstrated in Germany. And then, you know, give it three kilowatts, six kilowatts, just to get the communication, the connection all done. Run over to a kiosk, swipe your credit card, Apple Pay, whatever you got to do. Yeah. 
and then rip the juice. Yeah. Is that so kind you're of charging? Yeah. Hey, that's an option. Yeah. Uh, and I actually, I like that. Okay. It's nice. I think that'd be pretty sweet. I'd be curious to see how, what our audience thinks about the best way to activate chargers. Cause I agree. Screens on chargers are bad. Um, they always break. You can never see them in the sun. They're complicated. And the, the least amount of complication on a charger is the best. We were having a conversation earlier about e-stops. Yes. <laughs> how you would have to run a field service engineer out to unstop the charger. I can't tell you how many times I've done that in my past. Yeah, it's just crazy. So reducing complication, making it easier for, for the end user, and of course, high speed. I mean, we're just standing next to a charger doing 1.2 megawatts. <laughs> <I'm> such a... <laughs> this is just um, crazy. One thing we didn't talk about, and it's worth, like we briefly mentioned it yeah. when we are talking about switching over to DC. Now, honestly, there really is no profitability in uh, uh, charging infrastructure. Majority of consumers that own electric vehicles charge at home. Yes. Majority. Yes. And so the typically installed, or uh, rather the high power charging infrastructure is deployed in the middle of nowhere where you don't have utility. Right. Uh, and because you don't have to fill up like you do at a gas station, uh, it's difficult to really make a lot of money on charging infrastructure. Absolutely. Um, so there, and then certain states, this is another thing worth mentioning, certain states don't allow you to charge per kilowatt hour. You have to pay by time. Yes. And so that's still like a legal battle that we're facing here internally with uh, different uh, power commissions throughout the country. Right. Uh, but my emphasis here is the future of infrastructure for charging is going to be uh, AC and DC microgrid. So you deploy the charger in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't matter where, like in the perfect location that a charger should be installed at. Yep. Uh, and I kind of see it as like the electric Route 66 of, yeah. of the future, where you have a convenience store. You've done a video of that before. Yep. Those little pods that we that yeah, can be dropped perfect. in. Yeah, yeah. You've got restrooms, but you, you're not going to be there long enough to need to use it. Sure. Uh, but it's there available you're, for your convenience. And so these microgrids support the local communities on their served communities to give them the power that they need besides just vehicle charging. Because obviously we all know that uh, charging stations aren't used 24 seven. Right. So when they're sit sitting idle, why not collect energy from some uh, sustainable source and distribute it back to the local community? It's pretty That's sweet. the future of charging. And so, you know, we're gonna see your cells in the batteries yes. connected with your chargers, powering cars. That's next. Okay, that, I wanna film that video. Let's check out the- Let's the, check out the water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> nice. Smoking it right here. I mean, full boil on all four pods there, full boil. Look at that one right there. Yeah, that okay. is so cool. Um, we could keep going. No, Usually no when it comes need to, to smoke this. it. Can we take a look at the camera oh, though, yeah. just before we stop? What do you want to see? I don't know. Step on fire. No, <laughs> we don't do that. We're about safety here. Yeah, yeah don't jump in. No. That's so freaking cool. So we're at 96 Celsius. Damn, smoking it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead. stop charging. Go ahead and you take hit stop. a look here. And boop, charging That's stopped. It. Boil stopped instantly. So what's worth mentioning is everything that you did was done on the cloud. You were not communicating directly to the charger. You're communicating to the Atlas cloud server. And then when you're typing in commands here, it's sending into the cloud. The cloud then sends it to our local uh, server. Um, and then it distributes it to the unit. Now there are different modes where you can directly communicate, but yeah. the future of charging is a connected ecosystem. And is that sort of setting the groundwork for the app activation of how the chargers will work in the public then? And it communicates to the vehicles too. So let's say uh, Tesla decides to I open can literally up. feel the warmth from yes. here, by the way. Sorry to now let's walk back that. to the That's pretty crazy, yeah. So anytime we do megawatt charging, we always get a crowd over here because yeah, like it's, it's never done. Just <laughs> and that was a long run. Yeah, that was I, I don't even know, I lost count. Yeah. Um, and so, you could see, oh, you could see it, it started breaking through. Right, yeah, so we were, I don't know, what, 30 degrees C on and that what would inlet? You say? Slightly warmer than ambient, but barely. Um, so when other this vehicles- This is cold to the touch. And it will be, yes. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And so uh, when it comes to the future, what we're gonna allow to do with the standard is to have the ability for other vehicles to communicate to our cloud. Therefore, when you're connected uh, your vehicle to an Atlas cloud system and you pull up to a charger, the charger already knows who you are, the charge rate that you want, and as soon as you plug in, it gives it to you. Mm. And if there's any billing involved, it does the billing automatically. Not far off from how others are doing it. That's the way uh, to do I, it. If you can, go ahead and unplug it. Yep. And uh, let's do some CCS. Okay, sounds good. So I say we uh, plug in the Model S. By the way, nothing looks fried in there. Come take a look. That all looks pretty normal. This thing just 
ripped, I don't know how many kilowatt hours through this thing, but we just dumped a ton of current yeah. through. I'm sticking my finger there. <laughs> that's crazy. They're gonna, when we do them, they're going to have uh, touch-proof pins, but that's okay. all that energy and the cool to the touch. Dude, you're crazy. I, I know yeah. you trust your work, but like, holy smokes. Yeah. It's... <laughs> no, wait, let me go straight, straight in, in on that. Perfect. Yeah. And we're going to run that design as, as time goes on. So let's plug in the Model S. Yeah, let's S. do it. So we actually did a dry run of this before with the Model S because I wanted to see how it communicated. And it charged so quickly, I noticed that we had just tapered. So we plugged in at 7%. Battery was kind of warm on the car, but warm enough to accept the power. And we went to 33, 34% in about seven minutes. So following, you know, basically every bit of request that this thing can take. What I thought was really funny is we used a 350 amp cable. <laughs> we used the 350 amp. Under supervision. Under su yeah, we had the, the temperature guns on it. Totally maxed this thing out. And uh, we were doing 261, 262 kilowatts. Yeah, that's what the, like that. we, we could have kept going, but. Oh yeah, but I was like, stop, because I want to get it on the video. So let me connect this up. It should be in uh, free vend mode, the way that they'll be out, where anyone can just walk up, no payment processing in place, basically. So we'll connect the CCS cable, again, just a regular REMA cable here to the Model S. So the Model S is blinking blue at the moment. So it's communicating. You can hear contactors going. If you take a look over here on the display, you'll see zero kilowatts is just about to go. Contactors just went on the car and it's gonna ramp up pretty slowly. So we're charging there at uh, two kilowatts, three kilowatts, and it's gonna go up. I'm gonna go get the laptop. I wanna yep. show you what happens behind the scenes. We may have some seats. limits set on the car, on the charger to be unlocked. So it's, that's funny. It says one kilowatt, but then 34 Thank miles you. per hour. So Model S is slightly mm -hmm. confused, but come take a look over here. We, um, Victor's grabbing his computer and he's gonna show us some of the back end. So you gotta unlock it. The Model, the Model S is confused. It's only doing one kilowatt, but it shows we 36 have miles right per hour. Okay, so, so this can is, we show everyone this? Yes, let's take this a look. So, so cool. right now, this is where we set the limitation. This is uh, so the car right now is asking for 481 volts, and we're going to send the current up to. Uh, well, let's set the max. What are you? 600 kilowatts. 600 kilowatts. Yeah. Why not? 600 kilowatts. Now we're watching the current jump up quickly. So we're 481 volts, and the current's ramping up. Let's see what's going yeah, on in the car. Car shows 160 kilowatts, 206 kilowatts. 207. So that's about what it wants at this state of charge. It'll start to derate. We're at 38% state of charge. Again, I have it in service mode, not for really any other reason. I just wanted to take a look at the data. We could take it out of service mode. So right now we have a limitation of 650 amps, but the vehicle is asking for 412, 411, 408. Yeah, it's ramping down just to follow its internal charging curve right now. This is pretty cool software. <laughs> I mean, this is real back end nerd stuff. Yes. That's pretty awesome. I mean, we're, you're just typing in the charger. Exactly. And ultimately, with any charging conversation, the car is in control, or at yep. least is the way it should be, which is why you told the charger, give it everything you can through this cable, which we're overdriving, allegedly. And the car's like, no, I actually want, I don't know, 158 kilowatts at the moment. Yeah, and we pushed how much earlier? Yeah. We pushed yeah. the max. I, I'm trying to think uh, was... what we did. We did si over 600 amps, Yeah. allegedly. <laughs> well, let's drain it. Maybe we can uh... actually, why don't we insert that clip so people can see that. So right now I'm going to insert a clip of this thing doing about 260 kilowatts on our previous run at lower state of charge. Let's do it. We are uh, ripping this thing 254 kilowatts, 18% state of charge. We got the FLIR cameras out on a 350 amp cable. <laughs> nice. Ripping. I think uh, there's 260 kilowatts. I think that's probably everything the car is going to ask for. What about now? We're at uh, 650 amps. Uh... We're at 261 kilowatts. 20% state of charge. Is adapters at 35, 36? Adapters at 36. Yeah, well, me melt it. So yeah. let's go Let's go check out inside the charger. I'm going to wait. The air, air compressor, compressor is the most annoying air thing. Compressor. You Don't can worry about it. Half our Atlas videos, that air compressor is the bane <laughs> of our damn air system. compressor. It keeps the production people running, so we turned it back on. So we're going to hop into the charging station right now. I want to show you some of the artwork we did. And when I call artwork, it's the bus bar that we designed to support that 1,000 amps and the current that passes through. And that's an interesting point, because when we talk about chargers that have multiple outputs, you can only send power in so many ways. 
And of course, there's 30 kilowatt bricks in there, but you can't dynamically share all of those 30 kilowatt bricks one way or another in a traditional format. So I'm really curious to see how you've done this. And uh, yeah, let's run inside. Let's yep, go take let's a look. Check it out. We'll step over the cable. Our camera woman, make sure to not trip on that, please. By the way, this is a battery pack. I think it's roughly 30 kilowatt hour usable. We're going to go ahead and have cells inside. Pretty cool. Charging. That'll be a future video. We're not charging. Okay. Not right. soon. I think we'll come back and film it. Let's run inside here. Super windy in here, of course. Actually, let's, think let's, we can... let's make it quieter. Let's yeah. uh, shut it off. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Fans off. So you can see it's a little toasty now in here, uh, trying to keep up with all the power that's coming in here. So we have all our power electronics here. Then we have uh, each unit right now is sending power individually uh, into a common bus bar. But the future of the charging, as you mentioned, is separated uh, power outputs. And so each track will have its own contact or a disconnect uh, in which it switches between channels or buses. Okay. Uh, currently for this particular design, we have one station to demonstrate. Yep. Um, and it all comes into one combined DC. I love the screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> Safety so first. Le so legit. <laughs> and so as you can see over here, it comes into, we've designed everything in here. The bus bar, uh, FRP for uh, protection board, yep. uh, the contactor. So the way you have it over here is you have one contactor for megawatt charging. And on the bottom over here, this is the contactor for CCF charging. And then we have our own boards that we designed here in-house that does uh, voltage monitoring, current, uh, temperature, pressure, uh, the whole nine. Every bit of sensor information we can collect, we are collecting it, and then we're reporting it back to the cloud to understand the health conditions, to uh, predetermine if there's going to be a fault on the charger before it even happens. Yep, that's uh, As we sweet. design the, uh, the charging system ourselves, we understand that uh, when things are starting to get uh, difficult in producing energy, and we can then create a service call without anybody calling in. Um, and as you can see over here, this fuse is, uh, over here is designed for 1200 amps, which is the only reason we capped ourselves at 1200 amps. Otherwise, yeah. we would have kept going. What is the theoretical maximum you could do, do you think? So we designed the system for 1000 amps. Uh, I believe I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Uh, and we believe strongly that we could push over 3000 amps. Really? Through that. And we are going to try. Hell yeah. So we three megawatts. Three, Can oh, I? no, it's not three megawatts because we're going to push 1500 volts. Oh, so even more than yes. three megawatts. Yes. So what would that be? Four and a half, something like that? So, yeah, roughly. Yeah. Uh, can I be here for that? Oh, <laughs> I want to blow stuff up with chargers. No, I don't blow stuff up. It's one thing. <laughs> I, want to blow don't, stuff up. I am very cautious. Like I spend a lot of time to ensure we have all the safety mechanisms. Yeah. There might be some things that bend the rules a little bit, but when you have the right minds in place to understand how each component and the dangers of it, yeah. you take all the precautions necessary. Yeah, nothing's dangerous. E stops, fuses, uh, isolations, uh, everything is grounded. If there ever is a fault, um, everything immediately goes to the lowest path of resistance being the ground line. Sure. So from the container to the cabinets, uh, nearly every component, you will see a ground line. I love that. Okay. That's super sweet. And then, of course, you have some AC stuff over here. Yes. So Atlas is also, of course, uh, working on AC-based uh, yep. charging. Uh, but we don't reinvent the wheel. So in terms of the 22 kilowatts traditional J1772, yep. we're working with a partner in that. And when it comes to uh, uh, Atlas standard, where we're pushing towards a 50 kilowatt uh, standard, we're going to work our own communication standard. But we will be backwards compatible to support uh, J1772. That's great. I love to see that. And then, of course, some communication things over here. So CCS communications and... Something yeah, like that. Uh, the biggest issue when you do work with other components from other companies, you have different voltages that you operate on on the bus. We have 12 volts, 15 volts, positive, negative. Yeah. We have 24, we have 48 well, volts. Well, that's what here. you have going on Five here, volts. basically. That's, a majority of these components are uh, uh, the voltage controls that support the peripheral equipment and the sensing technology that we yeah. have. Yeah, but how do you get that all onto one plane? And then we are focusing on developing our own power supplies that have across the board all the ne power necessary to distribute within the vehicle, outside of the vehicle, whatever you whatever you name it. I mean, we have a full power electronics house here. That's so freaking cool. Well, I mean, it's really amazing to see just how much heat was generated in here during that time. Of course, you have AC cooling in this temporary oh, situation. Oh, that can't keep up. Yeah. a couple of minutes. Ago. Yeah, I know. It's just crazy. Let's pop on out, though. That was super neat. And then, of course, you have some other contactors. You got stuff all over the place. This is just like an engineer's dream come true. This is basically your playground. It is. <laughs> it's just insane. And when um, you start talking about like big OEMs that are focused on doing manufacturing and all the processes in place, there is a place and a time for these processes. Yeah. Uh, and you have to be aware when it comes to new technology, you have to know 
the dangers that come across. Obviously, it's going to be difficult for any company, not just Atlas, to deploy a charging system. It yeah. comes at a very large cost that has to come from somewhere. And so what we do is we employ all of our technology that uh, the OBC that will be in our vehicle will be the same technology that's in the charging station. So by deploying a technology that's a high volume, keeps the cost low. Uh, and therefore, you're able to skip a few steps when it comes to uh, prototyping and development. But remember, I do have to make an emphasis, this is a prototype. And when it does go through production, it will go through all the safety regulations and, and tests and ensure that it complies with all the, the required. Right, you got to be stuff. UL, uh, you know, basically. You don't have to be UL. So, but you have to match the UL yes. stuff, but you don't need to be certified by That's UL correct. as long as you own and operate. We will be UL compliant. Compliant, That's the word I was looking yes. for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, in certain instances, there are like insurance agencies or government agencies that require you have those certifications. But as yeah. Atlas being an owner operator of the equipment from energy storage to charging systems, uh, they don't require the same certifications. And that cool. actually, believe it or not, keeps costs low and deployment quick. And okay, so yeah. uh, these test houses can take six to eight months. Oh, longer, this not this is one of the biggest holdups to getting reliable chargers in the U.S. are going through these tests. Like there's chargers waiting to come to the U.S. right now but they're just stuck waiting for certification. Absolutely. As soon as your thing's ready, you're just dropping this in the ground. Is this one ever going to go public uh, uh, prototype? Hey, that's a, uh, we'll talk behind the camera. Yeah, okay. Uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, come and get me. <laughs> hey, we, we talked about it earlier. We yeah. know where it's going. Yeah, that's right, that's right. No, but can't thank you enough for the tour, for literally demonstrating megawatt charging for the first time, over one megawatt charging. That's right. Super cool. We charged a production car, nothing fancy here. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just, the freaking coolest thing ever. Yeah. I want to talk to Mark, who's your CEO, a little bit just about what Atlas is, of course, coming up. So we'll come to this in just a second. But yeah. Victor, everyone's got to subscribe to you on YouTube, Atlas Motor Vehicles. And uh, you got to see some of the cool tests that you're doing. The one thing I really just love about this is you're so open with everyone. I mean, it, there are hardships here. You have to deal with suppliers. You have all of these annoying things to get this to the, to the way, but you're taking everyone along the ride, which is so cool. It's one of our many core values that make it happen. Transparency, of course, as you mentioned, uh, we're all about candid ownership and uh, you see it here today. And we just uh, unveiled Megawatt Charging for the first time ever with a user plug. Yeah, so. like it, no one's done this. That's crazy. No <laughs> I can't thank you enough, dude. That Pleasure. was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I hope you fun. guys enjoy that. Let's go talk to Mark and then we'll wrap this video. Uh, so Atlas, you can think of Atlas as a vertically integrated EV company, uh, but today we're actually an energy company and that's a big focus for us. You can't have the vehicle without energy. You can't have the vehicle without batteries. You can't have the vehicle without infrastructure. Right. So. Right now, our big focus is we're a cell manufacturing company, right? Which we're building cells right behind you there in the dry room. It's pretty cool. Um, we're building more cell stuff out here. Uh, we've got engineering, which is entirely focused on cells and packs in yep. the back there. Uh, and we do like things like formation, test, and things like that. But then the other thing is, so we built this really cool cell technology, right? Around this idea of charging a vehicle in 15 minutes from zero to 100 percent. This is just crazy to even think about. Right. How is that possible from a cell perspective? So uh, a lot of companies focus on chemistry, yep. trying to solve it that way. Uh, what we identified is that heat and thermal management tied to the way the chemistry performs is actually critical okay. to this particular problem. Makes sense. So uh, we designed a very, like a, a very, very good heat conductor essentially in a cell. So okay. you think about like a cell today, right? Is it's uh, you got a bucket yep. of energy and then you shove it through like a really thin wire. Sure. What we did is we turned that thin wire into like a giant stranded cable, but we didn't add weight and mass and complexity and stuff like that. We're actually reducing those parts. And uh, a little bit about the thermals. Our audience, I think, has a pretty good understanding of like, you know, you want to precondition on the way to a charger. You want to right. cool down after a charging session. Yeah. How does that logic all work? Do you have a software team working to know when a vehicle is about to be plugged in? How does that happen? We do. So, uh, I mean, you own vehicles today, right? Yep. And you're used to sort of like you got a plan, you get to the charging station, it preheats before you get there. Yes. And then afterwards, it kind of tapers off and sort of cools down. Yep. We set out with a target to do all of that, like from the moment you plug in. Okay, interesting. So, you know, plug your vehicle in, cold start. Imagine like sitting out all night, right? And you drive yep. like a half mile to a charging oh, station. That's worst case scenario yeah. for charging, <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially yeah. in the winter, yeah. Right, so imagine that scenario and then you plug it in. You don't want to wait 
like an hour for it to heat up before you can actually start to really pump energy into it. Right. So we set out with a target, 15 minutes, raise the temperature, heat it up right to the point that it needs to be at, yep. dump a bunch of energy into it, and then as you're sort of slowing that charge rate down, we start to cool that thing down. It all happens in that 15 minute window. Wow, so from moment to plug in, no matter the starting temperature, pretty much. Correct, yeah, yeah. 15 minutes later, you're, you're charged. Yes, that is our absolute objective. That's like a line in the sand. And I hate when people say like, oh, it does it in like 18 minutes, yeah. right? And it's yeah. not a true 18 minutes all the time. Well, sure. Sometimes it's like 40, yeah, sometimes it's, it's like 19, yeah, sure. right? Like we, I, I don't believe in sort of uh, compromises or conditions where it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. So 15 minutes was like, okay, it must do it every single time. And we've got software engineers doing the algorithms for yep. it. We've got mechanical engineers over there doing like development work for it. We've got production people building cells and everything else. We've got thermal engineers and hardware engineers and we're building BMS systems and electronic systems and like <laughs> cable designs and all stuff in yeah. like this tiny group of individuals here it's really cool yeah so everything's pretty much under this one roof correct mm -hmm. yeah so if we walk over here like we have cell production over there yeah, inside so the dry room over this way guys you'll see just a brief idea of some of the cells literally being built from scratch yep we've got uh, a little more of the cell production out here okay. um, we do some of the prep stuff out here for uh, the cells that we're building today mm -hmm. Um, back here, uh, back here, we mostly do like some fabrication stuff and things like that when we're building yep. things out. Um, and then if we turn to the right, actually, and we'll just say behind the curtain yeah. is all of the sort of, not the wizardry behind the curtain, but that's the engineers, <laughs> right? And all the technical people, they're all yep. working back there. I had a quick sneak peek back there earlier right. and everyone was right. in meetings and hardcore getting stuff done. Yeah. So, and, and we do it all right here, which is kind of interesting because only two years ago, three years ago, we were still working out of my house. Oh, no way, that's awesome. Yeah, I so love that story. We had like 15, 16 people working in the bottom story of my house. <laughs> the garage was like, there's a software engineer sitting at a table. There's a big like blue tarp up. And on the other side of that is a fabrication team grinding and welding as we're building like the platform tech. And we've got like a battery group over here building the first <laughs> demo. It was just chaos. And what's what's the future? So obviously we're here today to show super high power charging, yes. but you got to charge stuff. So are you going to be making the vehicles, the platforms? What does that ecosystem look like? Yeah, so we actually started with this idea of building a full-size electric pickup truck. Oh, okay. And not not like your e-lightning. Right. Think F250, F350. Yep. Yeah, I'm a diesel truck owner myself. Yep. I wanted to build something that could compete with that and exceed that. Yeah. But you can't do it with battery tech today. Okay, yep. So uh, that's why we're doing battery cells and packs right now, because we're like, okay, let's create the technology that can make that leap forward. So Atlas long-term, I've got a couple of things that sort of we think about from a long-term perspective is, today we're an energy company. And this is really focused on this idea that in 10 to 15 years, you're not gonna pay for energy consumption. Okay. You're gonna pay for access. Okay, makes sense. You know, yep. renewables and energy storage is gonna drive costs down the way data was driven down. Yep. And you're gonna, it's gonna be so incredibly abundant and it's gonna be available. This concept of sort of like, I'll pay a monthly fee for access to energy is gonna start to take over. Okay, I can We're see starting that. starting to see that happen a little bit today. Yep. We're gonna take that and if you think about vehicles and energy, we sometimes think of them as like mutually exclusive. They sort of, they don't need to work together, right? But the reality is they, they do. You, know, you can't have the electrification without the energy side. Right. Um, you could have the energy side without the vehicles, Yep. technically. But when you bring those two together in one sort of cohesive sort of experience ecosystem, then you're really driving value. Right. Totally agree, 100%. So, yeah, so for Atlas, we think of as today we're an energy company, Yep. but I'm never losing sight of where we're going. And where we're going is an energy company that provides you with the infrastructure and the capability for that sort of tomorrow vision of electrification, yep. as well as how you operate your home and your business and all these other things. And then we're building charging technology and infrastructure to then facilitate massive adoption on the EV side of it. So things like megawatt charging and you know, better CCS charging yep. and things like that. But we'll basically go from an energy company to a mobility company, and it'll be more of an ecosystem approach. 
And then beyond that, I mean, there's so many things I could talk about from there. Sure. I which mean, get it really sounds, exciting. It, well, I guess my biggest takeaway of being here today is you guys are really generating everything from the ground up. Yes. It's a lot of, like you have told me many times and your colleagues, no compromise. Yeah. You know, if, if there's not a perfect solution out there, it's go and build it. And it's being built here, yes. which is really cool. I yeah. mean, it adds a lot of time, complexity. You need a lot of skillful workers. But what, what made you drive that approach of like, if it's not perfect out there, let's do it ourselves. Because that is a hugely complicated route rather than just taking off the shelf components and hodgepodging something together. Well, so prior to starting this, I spent 10 years at a company called Axon. Okay. And uh, like right out of college, I built the world's first 12 gauge taser projectile. So think of <laughs> awesome. like what officers carry on their hip. Yep. I put it in a 12 gauge shotgun shell. That's so cool. And then after that, did a bunch of stuff like advanced research, but I ended my career developing the hardware and software systems for video and digital evidence management for law enforcement. Mm. And when I look at that, we could have taken an approach when we were building those products to like buy stuff and integrate it and try to put it all together and sell it as a package. But the value proposition that we came with was we understood the problem segment here for the officer. And then we understood the problem segment that we were creating, which is how do you store all this evidence and how do you distribute it? And like, how do you create that ecosystem that works? Yeah. And we realized you have to build a really good product here, the sexy thing that they touch every single day. And then you have to build the support systems and infrastructure to make that product truly valuable. Yep. So when I look at this transition to internal combustion or from internal combustion to EV, you have to build the really sexy vehicle, the thing that can like compete to the point where when I look back at my diesel truck and what I'll be driving then and say, what was I doing? Sure. Like, yeah. why did I do that? Yep. Right. But then I have the supporting infrastructure and capabilities to sort of tie all of that together to make that thing really super easy to own and operate and function. It has to be. And as you know, today it's getting there, but it's, it's a challenge. Certainly. Right now I would say, and we'll give Tesla credit, right? Tesla, They've sort of set the bar in terms Absolutely. of what that seamless ecosystem can be. Yep. But they haven't, I don't think they've quite changed the automotive industry. Okay. And I don't think it's really truly changed for over a hundred years. Hmm. So the next big thing is like these things tie together, it's different ownership experiences, different paths from that particular perspective. So yeah. I think that's where we're going. Nice. And I'm being a little bit vague on that, even yeah. though it's like out there in the world, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you guys are, are doing it right. I'm excited to see what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. Of course, the charging side has me most excited because yeah. we need high power, reliable charging well, out there. How many times have you like plugged into a charging station and it either didn't work <laughs> yeah. or or maybe it worked, but you're, you're like frustrated, right? Because it's giving you like 50 kilowatts, sure. right? And you want like 150 yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. But then how many times have you like gone to a gas station Right, and go to put fuel in a vehicle and it just like didn't pump as fast as you thought it was going to. Right, yeah, yeah. It's Not rare that often. that happens, yep. right? Absolutely, yeah. So we want to deliver that. I mean, that's the good goal. That's what everyone wants. Right. And uh, the cool thing is your chargers will be able to support any vehicle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We want to be universal. We want to bring the whole market with us. It's not just about Atlas. It's like, if everybody else succeeds, we succeed. If everyone else fails, it's going to be really hard for us to succeed. Totally agree. But I think the industry is going the right way. Love the approach you guys are taking, doing it all from the ground up. Yep. And can't thank you enough for having us here today. It's Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I think yeah, 20, 20 minutes since we stopped charging, still steaming. I don't know if you can get that on camera. Yeah, we got it. Still steaming. 20 minutes later. Man, we must have got this thing red freaking hot.